Royal Jordanian is posting one of the fastest turnaround success stories in aviation in the Middle East. We're here to find out with CEO Stefan Pichler how he's doing it. My name is Shayan Shaquille, joined by Stefan Pichler. Hi. Welcome to Inside AB. Thank you. So Stefan, obviously the great news coming out of Royal Jordanian uh, at, the, at the beginning of this year were results from last year and you've managed to turn around profits. Can you just give us a brief rundown of what had happened over the year that led to that? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, basically, the issue was it was a team effort uh, and uh, we had a very good uh, second half of last year. Uh, the first half looked dire. We're heading down a uh, very negative trend in terms of revenues. And then we reversed our fortunes. We filled uh, more of our planes, so we enhanced our load factor from 60-62%, which was the uh, historical load factors of Jordanian, to up above 70%. Mm -hmm. So we got more bumps on seats, to be blunt, and this generated more revenues. Uh, so in the second half of the last year, we had much more revenues. We grew the revenues by more than 10%. And this helped balance out and accommodate the losses for the first of the year. In the end, we made a little bit of a profit in 2017, which was great because uh, the past for 2011 to 2016, uh, Royal Jordan accumulated about 144 million JOD losses. Right. Oh, wow. And that's significant. Um, you were appointed in May 2016. Mm -hmm. By sometime around June 2017 is when, you know, the situation was still mm -hmm. dire. And then all of a sudden in the second half of 2017 is when things really kicked in. Um, is that the same story that's happening in the first half of 2018 right now? Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, we, we, we had a very good performance. We just announced our results in the first half of this year. It's also driven by revenue, so we enhanced our revenues against the half year 2017, about our 333, 33.7 million. Uh, what's different to last year is the fuel price is a little bit higher, so they took right. out uh, maybe 80 million of that. We still in the end, for the first half year, halved our, the losses of 2017. So we are on the road to be profitable this year, which is a great achievement. Right. Stefan, 2017 was also a pretty turbulent year for aviation in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, everything that was going around. 2018 seems to be a bit less easier to, to navigate that uh, that area is that true? What would you say about that? Uh, well, there are always surprises. And this year, if you look at the fuel price, it's a big surprise, or yeah. it's a big uh, challenge for everybody, and it will impact the results. Well, I personally think it's, it's quite good because a high fuel price uh, keeps people disciplined because which me because it means that you don't operate all the capacity you have available. You get rid of the. Uh, um, aircraft which are not very fuel efficient, you operate less, you streamline your operations, so that's quite good mm -hmm. uh, because our business is basically driven by capacity. Right. So if you're tight with the capacity, you can make money. Um, if you're tight with the capacity in a consolidated environment like US, you make even more money. If it's free flow and capacity, you know, really makes money. Right. One last question about the fuel prices before we move on. Do you hedge as the prices are rising or what is your strategy with the fuel prices? Well, uh, Royal Jordan has not hedged for the last couple of years. We are now just uh, working on a hedging strategy, which we propose to the board in the next board meeting. So we try to catch up mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, I think the momentum is not the best. Uh, usually the big airlines like Lufthansa, American Airlines, etc., they have an ongoing hedging strategy, so they hedge whatever, 90% in the first three months, 60% right. in the next six months, and whatever. So it's an ongoing exercise. So if you just enter the hedging uh, strategy or the hedging uh, policy, then maybe timing is not the best, but you still can somehow uh, mitigate some of the damage. Right. Interesting. Now, You've also mentioned about, you know, the first half of 2017, the second half of uh, 2017, and now the, the first half of 2018. And your marketing push has been quite strong throughout this time. Mm. Can you tell us how that has helped drive profits? Because that, the, the idea was to fill in, uh, the, the, let's say, the cheaper seats on the plane, was mm. it not? Well, uh, what we tried uh, to do in Jordan is play the low-cost game because there was no real low-cost game played before. So which means we introduced cheap fares uh, which grew the market because people could afford to travel, travel around Jordanian who couldn't afford to travel before. These fares, of course, are non-refundable, so it's cash for us. Right. Uh, you have to buy extra luggage, etc., etc. So we adapted the kind of strategy which was new for the market and which had immediate impact. And of course, together with very aggressive consumer marketing, 
uh, which is driven to the sale and focused on the sale. So all this worked very well in Jordan, and this helped us to reverse the fortunes um, at a very fast pace. All right, excellent. Now, you've also gone on record and said that you're not chasing traffic from the GCC. What you're looking at is traffic through the rest of Eastern Europe, the mm -hmm. rest of Europe. Um, what is the strategy behind that? The strategy is uh, our underlying corporate strategy. When I started last year, we also developed a five years turnaround plan. And this turnaround plan was basically driven not by market share or market leadership. It was driven by sustainable profitability and sustainable cash flows. So at the end, this five years growth plan is only a compounded average growth rate of three and a half percent a year. So it's nothing, but it refocuses the airline, which means now we see our core market as the Levant. Mm -hmm like Iraq, Iran, whatever, some things uh, are, which are temporary, some destinations temporarily suspended, like Damascus, I hope it opens soon again. Right. But this is our core market, and from we want to connect this core market, our home market, to Europe, US. That's where you can make money. So what happened, of course, is if you focus on this strategy, you uh, have less capacity involved in GCC countries or flying to GCC countries where there's a hard, very tough competition. So get out of it and we focus on this market, which is more natural home market. GCC is not a natural home market for all Jordanian. Right, so are you going to continue pulling back from the GCC? Like your job? Well, we have to have uh, a certain exposure to, to uh, GCC uh, destinations like Dubai, Abu Dhabi, etc. Mm -hmm. But our growth will not come from this part of the world. Okay, right. Um, you have mentioned the unrest that was occurring in parts of uh, the Levant. It was, it was also happening in Jordan a few months ago. But Jordan also does remain, you know, one of the original tourist destinations in the Arab world. Has what had happened over the last few or, or the past few months in the country, did that affect that uh, position? No, no, no. I mean, if you have this kind of so short-term events or short-term media reporting or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really impact the destination. I think Jordan has a lot to offer. Uh, Jordan is basically a niche tourist market destination uh, for tourists around the globe. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of growth coming from Asia, there are a lot of growth coming from Australia and New Zealand, uh, and as well growth coming from US and uh, Europe because Jordan has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that, that could be done to you know, expand its tourism potential? Well, I think uh, we play a role in it, it, the tourism board and tourism ministry plays a role in it. We need to uh, carefully identify the market segments we want to target. And these are market segments around the globe. And then we have to work on this uh, with our partners. And what we need to do probably is uh, that we need to come together and develop all the stakeholders, the tourism strategy, Jordan 2030, and then work all towards a common vision. Right. Stefan, this, as Royal Jordanian continues to progress, and we hope it does, uh, would be one to add to your successes as a CEO of an airline. Um, you've been at Jazeera Airways before, you've been at Fiji, you've been at, uh, you know, quite a few Virgin Australia. Uh, where does the CEO story for you lead after this? Well, uh, I'm not so much interested in the CEO story. Uh, probably I'm the CEO because I know, don't know anything very specific. Right, <laughs> but but uh, I think it's about leadership of people, yeah. And uh, what what what's what's uh, exciting for me is coming and working in different parts of the world because you always start from scratch, uh, and then you start there and tr try to understand the people, love the people, love the country. And when you have done that, we are able to do that. Then you can lead people and lead the airline because an airline, a company, is people who work together may not necessarily want to work together, but have to work together towards a common objective. And that's the exciting part. It's very creative. So I like to do that. But of course, I don't like to run another CEO airline and, and then die suddenly, whatever. <laughs> so I, I will, will somehow at a certain point, of course, uh, pull the plug and uh, do sports and other things. I uh, enjoy to do as well. You used to be a former uh, marathon runner as well. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to go back to doing that? Well, I still run six times a week and do all, all other stuff like skydiving, school diving, etc. So I'm a sport enthusiast. Uh, yeah, and and it's part of my life. It's it's probably probably as important as business. 
Right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, interesting to hear that. Thank, Thank you, you, Stefan, for coming into the Arabian Business Studios and talking to us no about worries. today. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Thank you. Cheers. Um, we're going to continue with this and hopefully we'll have Stefan in our studios uh, in the future as well. Um, you're watching Inside AB. Remember to subscribe and comment below and tune in tomorrow for the next edition in this series. Thank you for watching.